Don't Cheers, buddy. freaking spill your drink. This I time. won't spill my drink this time. Nobody knows what we're talking about because we may or may not have recorded about two, three minutes without audio. But you know the vibes. It's all good. This is pure right now. Go yeah. ahead. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Uneducation Station. Uh, I am Zach, and of course, I'm here with my hostess with the mostest, Arthur. And Found this G Fuel. Yeah. It, it was in the local, local, local gas station nearby, Zach. I didn't think they'd do that. Shout out to G Fuel. We got the Sanix. The Sanix. Gotta the, go fast. The peach rings. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. <laughs> this video is not sponsored by G Fuel. But, but that would be sick. But uh, G Fuel, you know, if you if you want to hook up, do some business. Use dealings. code UNED and you will get 0% off. But <laughs> <laughs> but the customer serve but it'll but it'll enter their their debug and they'll be like what the why did this person use uned and then they'll look up uned and they might find us you know who knows Zach? the world works in mysterious ways so make sure you crash their servers with code uned yes exactly that anyways so we are probably doing one of the accidental the accidentally most anticipated episode uh because we've talked about it for like three episodes three in a row. episodes one episode because the timelines are fucked and we recorded an episode before two other episodes and we proceeded to oh excuse me talk oh i have more no i don't i do it's not here yet there it is <laughs> all the females have left the station We've talked about Angel Beats. We talked about watching Angel Beats. You started watching Angel Beats and talked about watching Angel Beats. And now we're here to talk about Angel Beats in the Angel Beats episode. We're here, Zach. We've yes. arrived at the Angel Beats station. Because we're uneducated. You know, uneducated station. That was bad. If we're uneducated station, we're not necessarily the train. We're just the station. <laughs> <laughs> now that I forgot it. <laughs> Welcome. You have arrived at uneducated station. The, un uh, the, 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 the Angel Beats festival is around the corner up your button around the corner and we're here to have a time zach zach watched angel beats unannounced not with me just by himself decided to have a go because i mentioned again you know if you haven't been keeping up with the last couple episodes i mentioned that i watched angel beats me myself well, or i i rewatched it because i watched it years ago right and then i <clears throat> i watched angel beats again on a whim two three in the morning on a whim like you know what this is the mood right now i could have watched the, the current airing seasons right now uh i couldn't i i could have watched all the other animes i have on my list right now that i need to watch no you know what i'm just gonna re-watch this show that i watched years ago because why not and i watched it and i killed through like six seven episodes in one night and i was like Ugh, fuck me man and then i killed through the re rest of them in the next night and i believe you did the same thing that's exactly what that's I did. Exactly what like you did. You, it was so funny how this happened. I was, um, I was sending you a Snapchat of of Angel Beats, and like just the the logo of the show. Yeah, and you're like, you're not watching it, are you? <laughs> Meanwhile, I was on episode seven of that night, uh, and I was like, no, I would never, uh, no. But uh, yeah, that was that was. So funny. And we both kind of binged through it in, in a similar fashion. And I feel like that that's kind of like the way to watch that show. I think so, because I told you, I mentioned it after you told me that you watched the six, first six, seven episodes. I'm like, oh, fucking hell. But then I was like, okay, listen, Zach. <clears throat> I'm clearing my throat, not because my throat is dry, even though it is. I'm clearing it for emphasis because this is how I felt when I, when I told you this next part. <clears throat> I said in Snapchat. I said, Zach, if you're going to finish Angel Beats, you have to you have to kill through the rest of the episodes in one go. Because lately we've been doing this three episode rule. Whenever we watch anime together, when we watch Demon Slayer, um, Your, Your Light April, all those shows, we did three episodes each night. Sometimes four, depending on you know if we needed to get past like a certain arc or cliffhanger type thing, you know. Yeah. But generally three or four episodes, and that's usually the general rule that you can do with most of these shows because they always terminate to that like 12 13 episodes 20 episodes even then that would work for a four episode rule and they break their arcs in that way so that way they can have kind of like four main or four con conflicts con four uh i think four uh, four main story yeah, arcs. yeah four main storylines four arcs and you know that works out or three to four you know 
however way they'd like to break that up, and it works out pretty nicely. Um, Angel Beats, you could do that, but the last couple episodes, the last handful of episodes are so fucking wild and compared to the first couple episodes, you're like, all right, I, I need to just one bang this out. <laughs> all right, Zach, since you are the guest of honor today for Angel Beats right now, and you have to prove yourself that you are not just Demon Slayer fan number seven billion. I'm just joking, by the way. We know you're not, but I'm. You know, you know, you know what I mean. Um, you let me know. Let, why don't you tell the people what Angel Beats is about? So, Angel Beats essentially is about a man. Why can I not remember his name? Oh, 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 jeez, I can't remember it either. Oh, it's like oh, it's oh, some oh, 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 Takashi. You can go. Oh, that's how it does. That does sounds kind of right, but you know we don't want to be racist here. So let's go ahead and find. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. um, you go, uh, but it, ot- Otanashi, I think, right? Otanashi, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, it, it, oh, we're on images. Isn't it Otanashi? Otanashi. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> My new home goal is Jose. <laughs> Let me pull up the My Enemy list. All right, go ahead. So, uh, how did I? Just forget his name in all of point three se- seconds. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give Thank you. This. you. Here we go. All right. Cool. Um. So basically, he ends up getting dropped into this world where he has no idea what's going on. He doesn't remember how we got there, and he's just caught in the middle of this like of of this conflict that's happening. He has no idea what the fuck's going on, mm-hmm. and then he meets this girl, Yui. No, 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 no. no, no. no. It was Yuri. Yuri. Mm-hmm. Um. And she was like, hey, listen, I'm going to explain what's going on. And essentially... And she has a sniper rifle. Yeah, she has a sniper very, rifle. Very, very important. important. She, <laughs> she, she straight up posted up with a sniper rifle explaining this Wait. while she's... <laughs> she's she's posted up. She's like, yo. <laughs> Welcome. I bet you're wondering why I've gathered you here today. So you're probably wondering how we got into this mess. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways yeah so so she essentially explains the rules of the world which are you have to fight to she said you have to fight to survive if otherwise you're going to be obliterated mm-hmm. and so she asks him to join the team that has many names and oh my gosh <laughs> like the oh, what was there was one of them I don't know if I'll be able to find it here, but mm, I don't know. Probably not. Wait. Uh but it was basically like the the anti or it was like the anti angel force or something like that. <laughs> I don't, a lot I don't, of names, a lot of names. A lot of different names. It's called the battlefront for generalization. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the anti angel battlefront. Um <laughs> And so basically you end up meeting all the people who were in this in this group. They were all just a bunch of of kids mm-hmm. um, who were just fighting against this one person, Angel. Mm-hmm. And they were in a world where it was like you were at school and, um, you know, there were a bunch of like NPC type characters that were just all around just like doing normal day to day school stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, the people in this battlefront would meet in the principal's office and like, you know, just kind of like plan a whole bunch of things where they would try to like steal people's meal tickets and like do a bunch of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it got really sad. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) (laughs) The general evolution of key visual animes, (laughs) the key visual effect, the key visual experience, as we always explain it. Yeah, here in the studio, here in the anime world, the key visual experience. If you missed the last couple of episodes, what is the key visual experience, Zach? So it's basically where they present an idea or a theme in the show in the very mm-hmm. beginning, which they did in Angel Beats. They were like, "You are dead. You are dead. This you is to- the in between of life and afterlife, and you have to either fight or get obliterated." And no one knew what that meant. Mm-hmm. And then, basically, you know, you meet all the characters, you yeah. get all the character development, they're off doing fun stuff like Mission Impossible style, and then, 
boom, the theme's back, and it makes you really fucking sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you forget they're there because they died. Yeah. They they are they're dead. And that is probably hmm. I don't know if I dare say death and afterlife is one of the most controversial topics of all time because it's something that just can't be settled because it's not something we can experience ever. Literally, because we'd have to be dead mm-hmm. and we wouldn't be able to live to the hell. <laughs> so it's, you know, I mean, a lot of the people have experienced it, but they just haven't been able to tell us about it because, you know, they're fucking dead. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so Angel Beats is about that type of so the reason why they are fighting so there's this angel tenshi or um this <laughs> or just this girl who kanade kanade yep tachibana kanade love her um kudere is that sorry r- random rambles that kudere which means like a, so there's different girl archetypes in anime characters there's you know kudere sundere you may have heard them sundere being like a uh kind of sassy uh i'm not doing this for you or anything type of girl that very popular archetype kudere means um what kind of day is where he's kind of like emotionless or whatever mm-hmm. um and you might okay well why would you like a girl like that is because the gap moe as we call it of when she does express emotion is top notch oh my gosh it's top notch and we get we'll get that towards the end <laughs> but uh, th- this is <laughs> random ramble i love kudere i am a kudere stan that is my that is I, I will die on that hill, Zach. I love all girls at Akuteris. Anyways, she is the main nemesis, quote unquote, or uh antagonist, I guess, at least in the beginning. Um who, who all the kids are there to fight against. And um the reason why they're in this world is because they lived an unjust life. And that's kind of the biggest, biggest overarching type of I guess theme. Motif. No, not motifies. Not, sorry, mo- not motif because it's not necessarily a theme. More like the biggest overarching, uh, uh, I don't know what word to say it, but, you know, it's the reason why they're in this world. Motifies. motifies. That's what you said. Did I say motifies? <laughs> yeah. Oh, motifies. <laughs> we like to coin phrases here, Zach. That's, oh, that's honest English. Three type shit, Zach. You don't know the vibes. <laughs> so, they're here in this world because they had an unjust life. Something there, you know, they had a shit life and they don't want to lead that life into the afterlife. They don't want to say, you know, I died at my young age. You know, they're all teenagers, remember? I whatever the reason they died for, um, not really revealed in the beginning, but as you keep watching, you you see some of them and not all of them. Um, but I, I will talk about that towards the end because, you know, we uh, it's more towards the end, um, about all the other characters and their lives. Which doesn't get shown in the anime, but will is more detailed in the light novel or sorry, the the visual novel because it is a game. So <clears throat> they lead this unjust life. They died to horrific ways. They had a terrible life. The, you know, uh, abuse in the households, um, rob, robbery and theft. Uh, you know, these type of terrible things, um, drugs and stuff. You know, this is the life they led before they died, and they're like, I don't want to live this life, or I don't want to have this life. And lead to the afterlife because the afterlife, who nobody knows what that is. And, you know, whether you believe in God or 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 Buddhism and stuff like that, you know, nobody knows what the afterlife is. Spiritual world, reincarnation, who knows if we talk about reincarnation, what are what do you have the slimmest chance of being reincarnated into a human again? You know? Mm -hmm. You can be a you can be a spider, a you can be a, a, a you can be this uh, you can be a badass fucking whale or some shit or you can be a fruit fly. You probably have a point zero 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 one percent chance, probably even slimmer than that, of being a human again. You know, and the reason you know they they, they you do you want to take that chance, Zach? That's a risky gotcha role. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and and like you know, even even just having the opportunity to sit down and talk about it i'm just thinking about like all of the different stories of all the different characters Mm -hmm. um like how they died how they got there you don't have to play that you know you don't have to play the game to figure it out maybe if you if you're that curious you or zach or the people at home you know who have also watched it i might even do it myself because i'm curious i might actually play the game honestly that's more my road (laughs) natural evolution but you know you can read up in it if you want read some synopsis on the characters and 
But the characters that do get shown, oh boy. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, what's her name? Uh, she was one of the musicians. Oh my gosh, dude. Fucking the uh the first story that we Masami, the musician girl? Yeah. Yes. Uh so she had a very, very interesting upbringing mm -hmm. and like just learning about how like she just wanted to play music and like all this kind of stuff it was just like fuck man she yeah 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 yeah, yeah. like oh my gosh dude i <clears throat> her okay first of all you know Couple musicians, I guess. <laughs> I resonated pretty close to it. Just maybe a little bit more. But she was the first one in the series to get quote unquote obliterated. Should we explain what that actually means? I guess so. So being obliterated, you just uh, to what the way Yuri explained it, and Yuri, the one the, the main girl that we talked about with the sniper rifle. Um, it's kind of like the leader of this brigade of a bunch of teenagers who are fighting against afterlife or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, the way she explains it is that if you get accustomed to your life here, you kind of sit with the NPCs and do your school life and attend clubs and, and sports or whatever and just down to do your thing, you will get obliterated. Whether that means turn into an NPC or you... Or probably, well, not really, but um, you just leave this world. You you disappear, or you know, if you want to put it in a certain way, you accept and you enter reincarnation or whatever quote unquote afterlife may be. Yeah. So basically, this was the the precursor to the afterlife, mm -hmm. and so once you accepted the fact that, like, you accepted the life that you had before, and when uh, Otanashi when he came into the world, he had no memories mm -hmm. of he how we died he had am amnesia yeah and once you start to remember those things and once you start to remember the life that you had before um then you start to <clears throat> understand how shitty your life was and and once you can come to terms with that that's when you get quote-unquote obliterated um and so she was the first to get obliterated and it was when she was up on stage playing music and that mm -hmm. just freaking she yeah she, she had wrote a ballad and mm -hmm. uh everyone else who was in the band so they had a band that uh everyone at the school really liked yeah and so they would hold these concerts just as like a diversion while the rest of the the battlefront was off doing their shenanigans mm -hmm. um and so she wrote this ballad that the rest of the band was like, we don't want, like, no one's going to want to hear that. And then... Yeah, because it's, yeah, because it's like acoustic and it's like a, you know, not really distraction material like the the hardcore, the, the kind of rock, the kind of, you know, yeah. drums and electric guitar band type stuff. Um, and then gets all the kids and stuff in the cafeteria to go, oh, you know, it's not really distraction stuff for them to do, you know, ba uh, brigade uh, shenanigans type shit right yeah um <clears throat> but this one was different because they held a concert uh normally they do hold guerrilla concerts just surprise concerts that's how it works but this time they announced they were doing a concert so now the quote-unquote teachers npc teachers or whatever um are able to be aware of it so they kind of storm in and stop them after a while um and it uh, one thing leads to another and a guitar is about to be smashed or whatever the fuck. And, you know, she grabs it, gets pinned to a corner and starts singing this ballad. And this, yeah. I think my <laughs> favorite part is that it's a guitar that she had from her past life. Like, mm -hmm. I thought that that was so cool. Um, so her past life is one of the first past lives to be introduced as well as, you know, as she is the, the first girl to or first character to be obliterated. She had a what, like I explained, uh, abuse in the household, and she, you know, one two room apartment or whatever, two two room household, you know, um, husband beating on wife type bullshit, you know, that type of thing, you know, and it's really bad, and she had no place to escape to, so 
what she did was she found music. She went to a like a demoing area where you can listen to music and stuff, like put on headphones and kind of listen to albums or whatever for demo. And she found this band where the guy was kind of screaming, who had, who lived a similar lifestyle than her that that she did. So she, he that he was basically screaming the lyrics that he, and that she wanted to scream out too. And he was able to resonate with her as well. And he said, you know, uh, the life is unjust. My life was like this, you know, you're not alone type thing, you know, there's more like us type thing. And she fell in love with music. She found a guitar on the side of the road, acoustic guitar on the side of the road. First of all, fucking great find, by the way. <laughs> and <laughs> she started playing music. She, she started, you know, side, uh, uh, playing on the on the sidewalk and stuff and you know doing that type of thing and having a time and she decided that that's what she wanted to dedicate her life to she she started working jobs to pay for herself and to um to work for herself and still be able to play music and she really wanted to go somewhere she went to like record uh auditions or record labels and type of those type of things she was she was do she was she was doing it she was living she was starting to live her dream and she was trying to she was working really hard to fight that passion but that was lost because when she went into the afterlife the only thing that she was the only the reason why she went into the afterlife was because she caught a fucking she caught a random blow in the crossfire of his of her dad or whatever what yeah yeah yeah. because like dad beating on her on on his wife stray bottle smacks her on the head and she goes night night and that's the memory that she leads onto the afterlife with. But as she's singing her ballad, she kind of remembers the reason why she enjoyed music. The reason is because she wanted to sing her story. She wanted to, to resonate with the people. And she had this. She was singing. Everybody was silent. She had a crowd with her. The entire school, the cafeteria, they paid attention to her. And she was speaking her mind to them. They were listening. And then she remembered all the hard work she did. All the hard work she put out. You know, sitting on the side of the road, uh, playing music for pe- for on for oncoming people, going for those record labels and stuff, trying to make a dream off of music. And then she realizes, you know, my life sucked, but it was my life and I should be proud of it. And that was the first example of being obliterated. She just disappeared. Thanos snap. Not even Thanos snap. You know, she did not even. Well, it's a ve- very interesting choice of, uh, 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 of just of portraying it no residue she just disappears when you get obliterated you just disappear like just net one frame you're there next frame you're not no powder type shit no sparkly ascending type shit she's just gone i think that that was a really really good choice though for a lot of different reasons and one thing too or like one thing that i really really liked about it is the fact that it never ended up helping you have any indication of what would happen after you got obliterated. Mm -hmm. Like you, you never really knew because like the, the camera would go to, or like it would go to one character and then it would go back to her and then she was just gone. Not even like the guitar drops or anything. The guitar is just on the ground. Yeah. So it, it kind of has this weird interpretation thing of what happened here. Was she there? Was she ever there in the first place? Yeah, and that's kind of that slippery slope, that kind of super vague idea of this afterlife thing, or even life before afterlife, if there even is a thing like that. Yeah. I've you know there are some uh, some type of beliefs of like there being a kind of like a uh, an in between before you reach the afterlife, some sort of type of uh, uh, I know for some it may be a spiritual plane type thing, for some it might whatever it may be, right? The kind of like a waiting room, if you will. Yeah. I know uh, an artist that you know logic i listened to he made an album on that and he had had this kind of skit thing where excuse me uh he had a um there was this wait he called it a waiting room where before you became reincarnated or whatever or whatever they may be enter heaven whatever your your religion or not you know is there is some sort of in between before that happens and or that could not happen. Who knows, you know? And that's the, that's the big nature. Listen, this episode is not going to be like a Bunny Girl Senpai episode where we just break down everything, <laughs> break everything episode to episode down. Angel Beats has been out for years. We're talking about it, you know? Whether think, we talk about the end or not, 
we're gonna talk about it. And I I just want the main thing. I don't, Angel Beats as a story for the anime is great, and we could just sit down episode by episode. But what it really is is just something to think about. I think yeah. for me, Angel Beats was an is an idea, is open ended idea that really makes you question a lot of things. Of course, afterlife, like I mentioned, which is one of the biggest things everybody questions. You know, whether you're a religious person or not, death is still it's a fact. Death is a thing. Being new life being born is a thing which means there can be an in-between or there cannot that's the vaguest thing in the world <laughs> it's either yes or no there's a 50 50 shot of whether or not if one person dies well, they get reborn a minute after or they don't who knows that is what it that's what angel beats questions you because they bring up buddhism they bring up god and stuff do you believe in god if there's a god out there do you believe him do you hate god you know, mm -hmm. these things get brought up in Angel Beats, but it's not it's not like a it's not like a a hate a, 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 um, like a like a oh, you believe in God? Fuck you type of thing, like a hate Christianity type. No, 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 no. That's not what Angel Beats is. So I think the way that they were able to go about this idea in such a creative way and in such a such a way where they weren't going to end up upsetting anybody was they were they were just kind of pondering the idea of what happened after they got obliterated mm -hmm. and they were like we don't want to be reincarnated into like a a uh, oh my gosh i don't remember the example that they used but into like a, a bird or into like yeah into a I, fish I, I think it was they said a tentacle <laughs> or like a barnacle or something a barnacle yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um and then they they turned into don't turn into a barnacle battlefront for a minute there <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I don't even remember. But the way that they were able to just kind of make it very conversational, like what if this happened or like, you know, mm -hmm. what if this happened? They were they were able to go about it in the same type of genuine unawareness that that we have as well. Um, especially since they're in this world and they don't know what happens if they leave the world mm -hmm. that they're in. Um, and I think that that had a lot to do with the reason why they were fighting. Um, and dude, the, the reason why Angel or, uh, Kanade was even there just makes oh, me man. so sad. I know. It's the, like, uh, the first time I watched the show. Okay. We're going to, do we enter sp spoilers now? I mean, honestly, at this point, yeah, I suppose. I, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna, yeah, we're gonna go for spoilers now. You should watch it, but have a be ready for. You know what? <clears throat> we are gonna talk about spoilers, but up to up to this point, I feel like we've done a fair pitch of what you should expect in an Angel Beast. What you not expect is your average anime watch. Your cool fight scenes. Your your uh, uh, badass characters type watch. What you should expect is thinking, I guess. <laughs> that was terrible wording my bad um you should think just think about what you're watching i guess if you will you know mm -hmm. think about why they are there and think about what they are fighting for i guess have that mindset when you're watching don't it's a little different than what you'd normally watch and this is because this is more this is much more uh plot driven than any than a uh, normal enemy might be because again, this is a full fledged. It's adapted from a full fledged visual novel, multi multiple hours type of thing. You know, a multiple hour playthrough crammed into thirteen minutes, or sorry, thirteen ep thirteen twelve thirteen episodes. You have to think about it in that perspective. Think about not necessarily what you were shown, but what was taken from a much bigger um, project. I suppose. Yeah. Like you know. Um, Dune, that movie just came out. Mm -hmm. Have you watched it? Mm -mm. I have not watched it either. I didn't even know about it, but I was watching, uh, again, shout out to Trash Taste. I was uh, watching a little bit of it, and Joey for, and the anime man mentioned that um, Dune, the movie came out, and, it was, and he enjoyed the movie a lot, um, but what it was is not an action, but it's like a political type of movie. Mm. But they kind of portrayed it as an action, and that's why people, the mainstream audience, didn't really like it. But what it was was it, it's based off of books, a much broader scale of, you know, reading <laughs> and story and plot and development on on political affairs, you know? Mm -hmm. So the mainstream people didn't like it because that's not really what they 
knew they were getting into, and that's not the way they portrayed the movie. Even my parents, they watched it. That's the reason why I bring it up. They watched it the other day, and they were talking with their family with uh, because we, I was hanging out with my family that same day, um, and we they were talking about it. And my my dad was like, "It was pretty good, but you know, it was hard to follow, and it you know, it, it was like pretty okay." Um, but I feel like the way they watched it was too casual. The way that you're supposed to watch a sh- uh, movie like that, um, and it's three full fucking hours, you know. The way you watch a movie like that is not necessarily what you're presented, but what was taken from a broader perspective. Yeah. And that's what Angel Beats is. You have to remember this is a multi-hour, multi-chapter, multiple-day type playthrough game of just text. It's a visual novel, and you're like, oh, it's a visual no- A visual novel is an audio book, Zach. <laughs> it's a book. <laughs> So you just get b- b- cool pictures. You just and- get voice acting and pictures with it too, Zach. <laughs> Someone reads it to you. It's still a book. Audiobooks are still books, you know? And you have to remember, and like I said, it even goes through every, well, almost, well, I'm not sure if every, but almost every character. And you figure, figure out their stories too. And obviously they're not able to put that into the 13 episodes. I just want to know what TK was all about. I know, about. right? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting there. I, they talked about TK. Everybody wants to know, what the fuck? What is this guy? He Why spoke is, English. He spoke English. Why did he speak English? <laughs> <laughs> Why was he not able to read English? <laughs> you know? And I bet his story is probably fascinating as fuck. Yeah, and I, lo- I love how tastefully alluded to his story was. Like... Mm. They were like everyone else was just as confused as we were. <laughs> and I think that that was the best part was that like, you know, he just had those really weird, sassy English one liners. And it was just like the most it was the most bizarre, yet the most mm-hmm. perfectly done character I've ever seen in an anime because no one knows anything about this dude, but he's just there and he's he's helpful and like he contributes to the story somehow 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 and i mean you know if there's if there's one character that i would have loved to see in the show like see his story mm-hmm. like i just imagine him like just break dancing to death i know right <laughs> It's I. It's so intriguing. I I definitely want to. You know what? That's I'm hundred percent playing the game at some point in my life. I, I, that's the only reason why I want to play the game. Is to <laughs> but, figure out what the fuck TK. It's, it's it'd be an investment, Zach. That's tough. <laughs> that's even I haven't done that yet, Zach. In all my years, I have not touched visual novels yet. Well, I have, but not the ones that you'd be proud of. Um. Anyways, Doki Doki. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, with that in mind, watch Angel Beats like that. Watch Angel Beats knowing there's more and figure out what it is that they are trying to explain to you in the only couple episodes. Anyways, uh, let's talk about more things. The ending, Zach. Are we really going there already? Well, we're just kind of jumping around, Zach, because we're not, this is not Bunny Girl Senpai structure. We're just talking now. So when I first watched Angel Beats, Zach, I didn't actually get the ending. You know why, Zach? Because I was crying too much. <laughs> I was too fucking heartbroken at what I was watching that I couldn't even think anymore. The whole graduation was that like, all right, jumping more back. Okay, sorry, sorry, my bad. We're all over the place. The first time I cried, when was that? When was the first time you shed a tear in Angel Beats? What what arc was it? I can go first if you want. Yeah, you go first. Mine was um, Otanashi's train flashback. Oh my god! That was the first time that, yeah. I shed a tear. I didn't shed a tear during the musician uh, during a uh, uh, Masami checking name so I can don't get yeah. Not that, although I should have honestly thinking back, and I should have cried again during my rewatch. I think I, I got really sad though, but uh, especially when she was singing her ballad, I got really sad. But no tear was shed. Um, I got close to it though. Otanashi's train scene, flash flashback train scene, when he regains his memory um, through uh, hypnotism, because some guy has hypnotism, naturally, as one does. Um, his story is pretty fucked, too. <clears throat> Wait, I thought that uh, he got all of his memories back when he was with Kanade at the hospital. Two, he, so, two parts. He, he 
amnesia or hypnosis buddy, tyrant buddy. Um, what's that fucker's name? We don't talk about him. He's a fucking bitch. Anyways, he's a fucking bitch. <laughs> Ayato. What? Yeah, Naoi Ayato. So he hypnotizes Otsunashi to remember his past because he, uh, he did that with Yuri. And Yuri was able to do something, and Yuri recognizes that it's pretty powerful, and he has the ability to do that. So he does the Otanashi. That's when it starts. My bad. Ah, so I'm gonna take a swig. Good feel. So he learns about his past, and not even just the train part, but even farther. You know, him being a t- run run and gun teenager who doesn't really get life, but he has a Sister, a younger sister who's in the hospital, who's hospitalized, of course. Classic. God damn it. Is it. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I hate to interject, but I, I realized that it got up until the train crash. Um, That's where the, the memories ended through the, the first part. And then when he was with Kanade in the hospital, that's when the rest of it. But so basically his sister was in the hospital and she was like his beacon of life, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so she freaking died and it was mm-hmm. sad as fuck. It was very sad. It was so fucking sad. Oh, my God. And so after that, he decided that he wanted to help people and he started going to medical school and mm-hmm. all of that kind of stuff. And he um, was on his way to his, I think, a inst- uh, institution. Or a medical school type thing. Yeah, he was on his way to school to take some type of exam, right. and then, and then it's just like, yeah. ooh, train crash. train crash. Yeah, what is it? The tunnel. He's in a tunnel. Tunnel caves in. Mm-hmm. They're trapped on both sides. They can't leave. Um, all the survivors are taken out, and he and another guy, homie. I don't remember his name, unfortunately, but we'd have to go through the supporting characters to find him. So, I just shout out to the homie. You know, they kind of band up and lead the group of trying to survive, splitting out all the food and water they have for rations and stuff. And oh my gosh, it's very, I feel like the the novel probably goes even more in depth. After reading <laughs> light novels for a while, you know, I've been reading Oyegayu. It breaks a lot of things that in the anime, it did explain, but in the light novel, obviously it has more time to explain it, you know, more, uh, more detail and things. I feel like there was totally some sort of like a, um, a you know, a little society, you know, conflict type thing going inside. And you see that, you know, uh, like people trying to steal water and those type of things, right? I, I bet the visual novel probably goes fucking hard during those. But anyways, that's besides the point. What actually happens, Zach, is he doesn't, he, he doesn't, these train scenes actually keep going um, for a very while before he meets, uh, before the Kanadi part. So this goes on um, basically, I think, all the way until he dies, I think. So, he is a medical student. He, so he ch- kind of is the doctor of the, uh, of the of the train crash survivors, right? So he and then homie bro, who, homie dude bro man, um, kind of lead the charge. Split our rations. There's some delinquents who are fucking assholes, but you know, um, it's very, ooh, it's very human naturey. I I have to say, you know, it's very. Survival of the fittest and almost, you know, when I feel like you start, you hate, you, you really, you really want to hate the, the, the delinquents who try to steal water and stuff. And, and, you know, but you think of it in like a real world scenario. And when you're trapped in darkness, no hope for life for days on end, you start to lose your mind and human instinct or (laughs) not even human instinct. Uh, native or not that's not the right word primal Primal instinct yeah Yeah. starts to kick in right and you're like dude i'm i'm not trying to fucking die you know it and i want i think for me obviously you know i i want to say that i would never do that but who knows i could lose my shit because the the psychological mind when it goes crazy just you know you could be the nicest person in the world but as soon as you snap you snap bro you know yeah yeah and i think the most powerful scene for me that really showed the type of character that Otanashi was um, was when he was treating someone 
like you know he had a broken leg he had mm-hmm. a bunch of shit going on and this guy was just down he was down bad like ready to die yes. essentially um and then he stops breathing and otanashi is sitting there doing cpr oh, man yeah and he is just putting up every ounce of energy he has into mm-hmm. trying to save this person and he like he was there doing cpr up until someone had to pull him off of this guy because it's just lost Be- he's dead yeah, because he's, he's dead gone. and it's just like ah uh, yeah that that just really fucked with me because like you know that's ah uh, yeah i, I <laughs> being being in medicine and seeing shit like that, mm-hmm. like, you know, obviously I'm on like a different end of the spectrum, but like yeah. even even just remotely relating to that, just oh, it hit me hard. And like, I've been in that situation. Yes, in in my own in my own way, yes. and it fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but anyways, um. Oh. It's it's a ride, dude. <laughs> it's a ride, and that's what. And I and it, it's so much hitting all I want. So much, so much happening, and also it's just part of like. Also, you've been here for this is like episode like nine or some shit or ten. You know, like so much has happened, and now and just before this was the whole um uh, what was his name again? Ay- Ayato, the whole tyrant guy yeah. doing crazy, you know, killing and shit. You know, all of this is happening, and now you like it's it's part of like a this rise in action thing and then it's just a drop <laughs> you know yeah the conflict drops just straight down the falling action that's kind of what it is and this is the reason why i started i finally cried because again key visual experience this everything has just been so hunky-dory uh freaking chill funny vibes you know and now we're here and it's like again Otsunashi had amnesia. He died, but you kind of forgot about that for the past like 10 episodes. And now you're back. It brings you back. He, oh, by the way, he died. Here's how he died, in case you forgot. And it's, oh, when he, okay, when he, he, (laughs) no, when I, okay. And the point when I cried was when the, oh, he, so this is the point where he was with Kanade, right? Um, he kind of lost all hope because he found out how he died. Train wreck, ter- terrible shit. CPR, trying to on a dead man wasn't working, you know. And he comes back to reality, and he's ta- or he's back into the present, and he's like, he's like, he's like, you know, ah, fuck, dude, you know. He goes to Kanade because Kanade is currently, you know, um, passed out because uh, she had a bunch of uh, what's the word. Uh, personalities jammed to her head, which makes no sense. You should just watch the anime to figure that out. Um, because there were, the whole plot there line, were, yeah, there was there a lot of cl- kind of days. Cl- clones and shit. Clones was, and shit. It and was really cool. It was pretty wild, but you know, not really the 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 prospect of our conversation right now. Just watch the <laughs> show, bro. It's thirteen episodes. Um, <laughs> so he was with kind of day while she was in the hospital bed. He passed. He goes to sleep for a little bit while by her side and remembers a little bit more about it so it was what the the way this i'm sorry it's worth i'm everywhere right now i'm trying so hard but the way the episode and the way his past was kind of structured was that it showed all this bad stuff the train wreck and all that happening and he trying him trying to fight for his life delinquent stealing water him giving up his water for the other people trying to cpr a dead man everybody lose everybody around watching him cpr a dead man and that lowering the morale of the people you know i mean nothing lowers our morale more than seeing someone die when you're in a when a damn survival camp and then at towards the very end when he's with kanade he remembers more a little bit more a little bit farther and it was when they were on like fucking day five or some shit day it was day, day seven seven yeah, yeah dude a whole fucking week man they were all just laying down probably no water no food and he kind of he rem oh my gosh dude he remembers something and it reminded him of his sister and she was talking and he or what was it he was saying god i wish you would be better and then she was like oh you know maybe some um the only way i get better if someone would uh donate the organs and then that reminded him of you know donor card stuff you know on the yeah. back of all of her ids or i think driver's license or something you can 
I think we still have it. Um, there's a little mark where you can cross if you want to donate your organs in the case in the event that you die. And he pulls his out, or he asks he asked homie dude bro man if he has a pen, grabs a pen, circles and uh, crosses out the things that he has, you know, to donate uh, your heart, your lungs, all of that on his, on the back of his life. I think we have that right, or is it like a separate donor card that we have to get? Is it in the it's back a, of our licenses? It's a separate donor. It's card. a separate one. Yeah. Uh, I, although it does remind me, yeah, I think maybe like back then or maybe certain IDs that does exist I think I, I remember because that idea of it being on the back of a card doesn't sound unfamiliar to me so I feel like that was a thing at some point in time or maybe it is in other states who knows but <clears throat> he we did are that. talking about Japan so I mean I mean I don't well, it, it didn't seem odd to me I was like yeah that's right there that is a thing behind the card I don't know maybe I'm crazy um, but then bunny girl senpai uh, Sakata had it got a donor card like from the hot, I don't know, maybe different place. Who knows, right? This is all to 2010. <laughs> so, you know, this show's 11 years old and it's still fucking with people. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. So he does that. And then homie Dubo man is like, bro, you're a fucking, you're a wild man. Give me, give me that pen. He does it. And then, and then he, t- and then everybody else does it. Everybody else, you know, marks their organ donor cards. And it's like this really cool moment. Oh my gosh, dude, that was so great. And then, and then, and then, and then, <laughs> the, the, fuck, dude, fuck. Then the, finally, as they're fin- filling out their donor cards, the, the rocks cave in and rescue comes. And, but o- as soon as the rescue comes, as soon as it comes, bro, Otsunashi drops his pen and drops dead. At that very dude. moment. He, oh my gosh. Rescue was there, man. And that's that was enough, man. That oh my gosh, that hit so fucking hard. That's when I cried. I uh, that is the first time I cried when I watched Angel Beats. That is the second time, and that is also the first time I cried when I rewatched it because I knew it was coming and I watched it again. I was like, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. And then you, I I really just want to talk about uh. Kana day go ahead do it uh, do it do it zach let's so, hear it let's hear it i didn't i didn't hear this part like i said a little earlier i didn't get this part because i was too busy being sad in the first episode in the first time i watched it i rewatched it and then i realized the lines in the final moments and i was like oh fuck go ahead <laughs> so basically when Otanashi filled out that donor card, mm-hmm. he ended up donating his heart to Kanade. Mm-hmm. And she knew in the like in the first episode because he because Otanashi goes up to her and talks to her while they're in the middle of this weird firefight yeah. thing mm-hmm. at the very beginning. Yeah. Sniper. Sniper Your, rifle. Yeah, 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 just a whole bunch of crazy shit happening. And she straight up stabs him in the chest. Well, he asked for it. Yeah, he was like, like can yeah. What did he say? He's like, I can't. What, what is it? I I can't remember, but it was something along the lines of I can't die a die or something like that. I don't know. Can I not die here? And then she was like, here, I'm like, I, 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 here, watch this. <laughs> yeah. And so she knew that he didn't have a heart. And and when he found out, like when he learned the rest of the story where he got everyone to fill out the donor cards and everything, that was when he was laying on her chest at the hospital listening to his own heartbeat Mm -hmm. and it's just like oh my god like oh my god dude i can't express how violently i cried (laughs) 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 like (laughs) (laughs) i know zach i violently cried too I'm glad we didn't watch this show together because I feel like we would have both lost our shit and just like that would have been one of those moments where both of us would have been muted on discord because th- I didn't oh, want you to hear me. ugly just- cry was just <laughs> immaculate. <laughs> Oof. That was I, I think that that was the perfect way 
to find that out mm -hmm. because everyone else on this world was gone and it was just them two. Mm -hmm. And Otanashi asked her, will you stay with me so that we can help people? And she was like, no. Nah. And then, oh my gosh, dude, the fucking post credit thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest thing. Oh my God. So basically, they both end up coming back as humans. Mm -hmm. And that was so, that was so pleasant. I, that was the best closure like of all time, I think. Cause it was like, you know, this entire time we're talking about afterlife and, you know, and what you're going to be reincarnated as, you know, and it's like, oh, fuck. They find, you know, Otanashi and Hanade, they're finding each other, they love each other, you know, all that. And now they're going to leave into the afterlife. Who knows if they're going to be humans or not, you know, but, you know, life finds a way. Life finds a way. <laughs> it's magical, you know, and she, they find each other in the afterlife in, in, or in their next life. And it's like, and, and she was, Humming a song <laughs> from the band. Yeah. And yeah. He was like, I swear I know that song from somewhere. And it's just like it it, it locked into his brain. He was like, <gasps> <laughs> not like that, but you know. <laughs> That's it's, what I was thinking. I was like, I was, <laughs> <laughs> part of it is like, oh man. He's watched his after credit scene and then you saw you walk you see them walk past each other and you're like oh fuck please don't walk past each other ah oh, fuck please don't. like we were watching Kim no Noah <laughs> behind you <laughs> and they're in the future and they don't remember each other anymore and they keep walking past each other towards the end of the movie and we're like oh no stop please notice each other <laughs> but Something clicks in their mind that they know each other somehow, some way. And that's also... It was the song. It was, it the, was song. the song, It Arthur. was the song. See, here's... And, and same again with Bunny Girl Sent by the movie when 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 all was said and done and they don't really remember... The, uh, the Whatever happened was no longer in the in, in their timeline with uh, uh, her and... Uh, um, uh, 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 oh, fuck, dude. Oh, it's been too long. Uh, Maki no Hara. The, 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 the younger one. Shoko-san. Oh. Shoko-chan. Um, and Sakuta, right? You know, they had for the movie, right? And then towards the very end, spoilers, I know. Um, th I will spoiler this one because this movie is still relatively new. Be careful. Uh, Bunny Girl Senpai movie spoilers. Um, towards the end when she's playing with her... Uh, for fucking same, same thing, bro. Organ donor car sucked to gave his heart to her, bro. Fuck. <laughs> um, but she was playing in the ocean with her with their parents and Sakusa goes past and like, do I, do I, do I know her? And then Maya's like, I don't think so. And they walk past and you're like, no! <laughs> right? We're like, no! You know her, please. And then something snaps into the into his head and he remembers suddenly. And then suddenly, and then she and he calls out to her, Makinohara son. And then she stops and she remembers too. I that plays another thing of like, you know, sometimes you just Zach, how do you how do you how do you explain something like deja vu? You know? How it's, do you explain it's something? It's the most bizarre sensation because it's like it's like that moment where you're like, I feel like I've been here before. I've been here. Before. I've done this. I've talked to you before. We've had this conversation before. I've met you before. Why do I not know you? Why do I? Why? This is the first time I'm ever doing this. Why does it feel like I've done it before? This exact moment. This like literally like not, and not even not even like. Oh, I, I was driving in this road before. No, I drove on this road the exact same way, listening to this music, wearing these clothes, on the going from the same point A to point B, with the same cars in front and behind me, with the same cars to the right of me and to the left of me. Why and and it goes on for like ten, like ten fucking seconds. You're like, what is happening? How do you explain something like that? These types of phenomenons happen, you know, uh, deja vu, sleep paralysis. How do you explain some of that like, like that logically? I mean, you can, right? Some people say for deja vu, it's like, oh, it's something uh, you probably experienced in a dream that you that you created artificially, and then you're experiencing it now, or something like that. Or even for sleep paralysis, I mean, it already is like a um, 
what your your body wakes up before your mind or something mm-hmm. or vice versa. No, no, no. Your body does. Your mind wakes up before your body, so your body doesn't move, right? Um, but then, how do you explain the fucking demon parts? That <laughs> right? It's these things happen to us. The 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 what is that saying? The like the call call to the void or something in France or whatever, where it's like you have these thoughts in your head that just is just super outlandish, absurd. You would never do, but you just have them. It's like calls to the void or something like that with the way it translates. It's something in like French or something. These types of weird phenomenons happen in life. But we can't explain them. At least not. Well, we can, like I said, you can scientifically say it, you know, like like we said for sleep paralysis, uh, the body, uh, uh, the mind wakes up before the body. Sure. Yeah, whatever. But the rest of it, the psychological part, the reason why I don't, you know, these types of things some there like we've always say you know there's some type of magic in this world what whether it be we we're we we're, we live in a scientific world where everything is proven by science and that's the best way that we can do uh, to uh, structuralize everything to have an understanding of everything scientifically or even religiously but we can't explain things like deja vu things like sleep paralysis things like afterlife things like death or life after death things like reincarnation things like whether there's ghosts or not paranormal activity we can't explain these things because we're but not they, talking about the movie, by the way. No, 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 no. I'm t- fucking whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> these things happen in real life, and whether that, I mean, you know, some people they say that's just more of like a, a subconscious thing, a psychological thing. Some people just uh, think they see things. Why do they think they see things? There's too many things that happen because the brain is so abstract. The brain, the eyeballs, us, Zach, humans, the brain con- conceptualizes things that they want to see do you believe in ghosts <sighs> i think because the way i was raised i'm a, in, i'm a buddhist house i raised i'm raised buddhist right yeah so i do yes <laughs> ghosts not the right word more like spirits yeah yeah, yeah spiritual yeah. type stuff yeah that's the way i was raised okay good because i do too mm-hmm. and i've i've seen some shit mm-hmm. like and without a shadow of a doubt i i've experienced things that i would love to to talk about in an episode or if you mm-hmm. want to talk about it now we can totally do that uh, yeah because we're off the rails we are off the rails <laughs> but even i don't know we'll we'll, 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 we'll see we'll see i don't know that could be a fun one maybe we should have done that during the spooky episode <laughs> oh that would that have, have been, been so good <laughs> but yeah the the concept of there is something that is unexplainable unexplainable about this world, about the world that we're in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all go through our day-to-day lives doing our stuff and things and things and stuff. And, you know, a lot of people don't really think much about it. And then you have that moment of like, what the fuck is going on? What like, is happening? There are Zach, so many things that, that are unexplainable that just happen in the world. Have you ever just been driving? Maybe a familiar road, even not a familiar road, and you zone out? Or or rather, you're driving, and then you you you're, you think you're driving, and then you... Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, what happened? What Was I driving? Have I been driving for the past two minutes? For I the to- last 30 minutes? I totally zoned out, but yeah. I was driving i was turning i was signaling i was braking i was stopping at stoplights it wasn't like i was fucking asleep and i was just you know (laughs) yeah i was doing all the precautions like i was normally driving but i just zoned out for a bit what (laughs) how does that you know things like that and things that we can't explain but you and i understand and the people understand these things happen but why does it happen? And you can there's there's psychology studies and all that type of stuff. Sure, whatever the fuck. Listen, I, well, I'm not tinfoil hatting. Those exist and those those what those are are just you know they are facts, sure, and they are st- case studies and they are as scientifically close to what we can explain as possible. But even then, even with all that said and done, it is still fascinating why that happens. Honestly, it's hard because there are a lot of things that. In, in science where they just are looking for an ex- explanation for the unexplainable. Right. And the for f- like peace of mind, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the fact that, I mean, I don't understand why people aren't fascinated by the fact that we're sitting on a floating rock in the middle of bum fucking nowhere in this 
infinite vast space yeah. that is expanding and becoming more infinite. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's like, how is that not fascinating to you? Yeah, like no, we, we are living in the only inhabitable floating rock in our circle of floating rocks that are right next to other circles of floating rocks that just go on for ever forever arthur forever literally and there's no end there there is no end and out of all of that stuff we are here like you know imagine a beach zach a big beach an infinite an beach. infinite beach okay or not even you know what let's let's for 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 Thinking of it in your head, for better conceptualization, let's just say any beach. Maybe it can end. Whatever the fuck. Let's just say it's just a beach, the beach on the on 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 the, on the coast, or wherever the fuck you live in. Okay. There, if it is a beach, I'm gonna take a wild guess that there's a lot of sand. <laughs> really? <laughs> now, Zach, now that you've understand understood that there there may or may not be quite a fuck ton of sand in that beach, including underneath the ocean. One speck, one singular grain of sand is earth, is habitable earth, is us, is our world. I thought of a better way to explain it. What is the better way, Zach? Let's hear it. So imagine the entire ocean. Ocean. The ocean. The notion motion of the ocean. The, yeah, the notion of ocean. So. Okay, bye. So. <clears throat> Now imagine a single drop of water mm. of the vastness of the ocean, of the billions of gallons of the ocean. I feel like billions is an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like trillions, zillions, quadrillions, cabilla billions. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, the, uh, uh, yeah. Infantilian. <laughs> uh, just like a metric fuck ton. And then there's just one drop of water where our entire existence is. Uh, the entire existence of humanity is in one drop of water. And now imagine that there is another ocean that is just as big as our ocean, but it's somewhere else. Billions of miles away, billions of light years away. Mm-hmm. There's got to be a drop of water out there somewhere. But that's that that's an entirely different conversation, know, but 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 it's, it's just it's fascinating. Like, holy shit. And like you know, we watch these shows that that talk about these things that are quote unquote controversial, but it's just the the exchanging of ideas of yes. like what would happen if mm. we did end up finding out what the afterlife was like or yeah. what if there was something like angel beats where you know you had to decide decide yeah. whether or not you were going to stay or you're going to move on to the afterlife whatever that may be it's it's such a fascinating concept and and the fact that there are people out there who can make these shows that have the creativity to be able to tell this type of story mm -hmm. in a compelling way to make you think like, holy shit, what if that happened? Right. Like, what if what if something like that really did exist out there? We just don't know. Because, you know, you kind of have to be fucking dead to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, you know? Yeah. And it, uh, it's so fascinating. It's so cool. That's why I say, you know, it's Angel Beats is not challenging any like religion or anything. It's not. It brings up different religions, but it's not saying one is wrong or one is right. It just gives you an idea, a perspective of, of you know what, let's say, because I think, uh, what is, does afterlife tie more to Christianity or Buddhism? I think Buddhism, right? Or like reincarnation? Yeah. I think it's more Buddhism. It's more Buddhism. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> it's not saying Christianity is wrong. Right. So, and it's also, but it's also not saying Buddhism is right. It never claimed any of that, but it brings both of them in the story. All it's saying, all it's doing is just providing an idea. Yeah. Just a, here's this idea. 
I'm going to present it to you. Not, and you don't have to believe in it. You don't have to make it your new fucking religion. Angel Beats is my religion. <laughs> you don't have to make it your religion. You don't have to be super atheist, hateful on it. Just think about it. Apply it to your religion. Or if you're an atheist, apply it to your thought style. Apply it to the way you think. Your outlook on life. Your outlook on what afterlife could be. Or even just your outlook on how you want to live your life going forward, knowing that this is just an idea. And even even outside of of the real life implications of of these ideas, the fact that they're presented in the way that they are, mm -hmm. even if you don't use any type of self reflection or anything like that, even if you take a very hands off approach to watching this show, it's still a really fascinating story, yes. and it's still it's still very stimulating to the mind, and mm -hmm. it's very it's very intriguing to watch and it's very interesting to see how other people think even in a narrative format how other people sure. think about these ideas and especially if you're you know like a, a teenager a young adult mm -hmm. and you're just like i wonder what what happens next mm -hmm. and just that that pondering like throwing a whole bunch of stuff under the table like what if this happens or what if this happens you know because nobody knows and just that kind of that dial that that dialogue between people of just you know coming up with what they think is what's going to happen even mm -hmm. if that isn't the case or even if you know it's not tied to any like religion or anything organized or anything right. like that it's still just an idea I think what helps is that, you know, we, you and I might have this type of conversation anyways. Like, oh, I wonder, you know, maybe we're just having a beer and we talk about afterlife. Mm -hmm. I don't know, just a random conversation we have after a fucking beer or something, you know. Um, talk a couple talks with a couple mates, you know, just having a time. Sounds like a conversation we would have. It does. Just like normally. <laughs> just normally, no just beer. In a, <laughs> just in a Discord call. You know, <laughs> but what helps, I think... And this is why I love anime so much is that you see a visual representation of this conversation. Yeah. Um, there's always, you can always talk about what if, what if this, what if this, what if this, and have conversation to the end of time with another person. But having a visual aid to see that in fruition yeah. is much interesting because you have this idea in your imagination as you're talking, but now you can actually see it in fruition. In, through your eyes. It's, it's here. I think that Zach, I, 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 once upon a time ago, I said that anime shapes me and the way I think. And I learn a lot about anime and I live my life through anime. And I think uh, once upon a time ago, you laughed at me when I said that. But now you watch shows like Angel Beats and You're Lying in April and Kimi no Nawa. And you, I feel like maybe, I, at least I hope, you kind of understand where I'm coming from. To me, after watching so many shows like that, not even just those three, tons of shows like that. I have, it's not like I live my life like a anime protagonist. No, 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 no. I'm not, you know, I have the anime protagonist here right now, but I'm not pretending like I'm Otanashi, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. What I am doing is taking all the ideas and motifs and th the motivis and the themes, you know, <laughs> from all these shows that I've watched. The motifis? The motifis. All of the shows that I've watched over the years. I'm taking what they wanted to present to me and the ideas, the what ifs, all of these things. Like there are some shows where it's just fucking sad. There's no resolution. You're just fucking sad. And you're like, why did I watch this? Why would anybody create a story like this? There's like the slimmest resolution and, it, and the resolution is open ended. So you don't, there is no happy ending. It's just like, fuck, dude, what do I do now? There are shows like there are animes like that. There are movies like that. There are shows like that. And then it's not for you to like, be all depressy sad boy it's just a thing yeah you know zach i haven't watched this movie but remember when joker came out mm -hmm. and i haven't seen the movie but i, I I'm, I'm have you watched joker mm -hmm. okay but i've heard right because i know a lot of people have watched joker i've talked about joker with a bunch of friends you know and i don't i'll watch it at some point i don't care if i get spoiled i mean i i could i could take a guess and i feel like if i if and if i do get spoiled one, what is there to be spoiled of? Two, I, I probably would be fascinated by the movie anyways. Um, seems like that type of movie. What it was was this outlook on society from a person who was, you know, kind of a little 
you know, cuckoo for cocoa puffs, little yeah. cuckoo for cocoa puffs, you know. But it was also this kind of true thing, this kind of what <laughs> society, you know, <laughs> the whole meme. But what I understood was the ending is just it's not necessarily a resolution. It's just it's just like kind of fucked, you know. But that movie did really well to people because every single movie in the goddamn existence has a resolution. It's just a classic, you know, rising action, con- uh, climax, falling action, resolution. The classic structure. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just how it's just storyboard. It's just story making. It's uh, st- uh, storytelling, right? But when you have something that's just fucked from start to finish, what 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 are you left? You're like, well, why, why why would you make a story like that? That's not to. It's not for entertainment. It's just for you to think. It's for you to not take anything from it to a. Uh, uh, maybe directly apply it to your life but to think about when you do do things in life and then think of that in the back of your mind like there's a show I mentioned way back or this anime called uh, uh, To Your Eternity mm-hmm. I watched only a couple episodes of it so I cannot say for the rest of the of the anime maybe there is a resolution, resolution I don't know but the first couple episodes are fucked it's just downhill it's like dude what am i watching everything is just so sad and everything is so tragic why is why would someone make a story like this it's not to make you it's the point of it is not to make you depressy boy you know Mm -hmm. all that that is a side effect the point of it is to just make you think to make you think about life to make you think about the choices that you make to make you think about you know what how 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 can i apply what i just watched to anything that I do, what is the point of what is the point of what? It's to make you think, is all. That's all it is. Just to make you think. If it can make you think, it means that it's done its job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, Angel Beats was one of those shows that it it the story in and of itself obviously was sad. Yes. Um, and it made me think about a lot of really sad things well Mm -hmm. not necessarily just like oh depression but like thinking thinking about sad things in my life that that follow the same type of idea Mm -hmm. of you know someone who was kind of like taken away from the world Mm -hmm. before it was time and and it almost feels like they have unfinished business right and i feel like you can kind of get what i'm talking Mm -hmm. about um and you know I'm not going to go into like a ton of like, I'm not going to dive deep into it because I don't I, I feel like that's not a conversation that right. we should have on the show or at least in the context of a fucking anime. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think about these people who followed so closely to the story of the characters in this show. And it's like, fuck, man, like that. I think that probably made me more sad than the show itself, because like. I've seen it happen. I've seen people just disappear out of my life and mm-hmm. I never get to see them again. And it's it's such a, a bizarre feeling and looking back at the show and everything like that, you know, understanding just like the the confusion and the 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 sensation of not really knowing what to do with yourself when something like that happens and it was kind of scary how they how they accurately represented it in the show um because it's just like whoa fucking now what i don't know what to do now right um but yeah it's it's very interesting to try to explain like the the connections between things I've experienced in my real in in mm-hmm. my life and things that were presented in the well, show it's because, because it's unique to yeah. you and it's unique to everybody. Everybody has something very unique that happens, whether that be you know the same uh, the same thing to other people that they know, like uh, that you experience, but in different circumstances mm-hmm. with different cause and effects. That's what shows like Angel Beats do. You know the story is great, the plot line is great, and the characters are awesome, and all that type of stuff. But that's not necessarily the point of Angel Beats. The point of Angel Beats was to make you think like that, was to make you think about those people in your life, and was to make you think about your life yourself, your uh, your uh, your own life. 
and it's just it just throws ideas into the world into the into this void that you can grab from that is your mind mm-hmm. that's all it is you know and uh that i feel like the average anime watcher the average demon slayer watcher doesn't really get a chance to think about anime that way which is why i recommend you know shows that aren't like demon slayer and stuff you know um and that's not their own fall i mean teenagers and stuff you know they, they got other things going on it's whatever you know maybe maybe the fact is just because we're, we're we're kind of in the young adult age 21 you know and we were out of school and uh, working on adult life stuff and we have more to think about and maybe after experiencing all these things that you've experienced all the things that i've experienced in our lives seeing kind of a, a, a reflection of that in these animes have an, have a way have, make us think a bit differently than what we would maybe we would have thought about it when we were a teenager definitely for me when i watch anime as a teenager you know i definitely think about it differently than i think about it now um but i just want people who are teenagers to have an open mind when they do watch shows like this because i know if i tell some random random homie random friend, and this is no nothing against them of course but if i tell a, a homie in high school right now hey you should watch angel beats they're probably not going to have this type of conversation with me yeah but if i asked a homie who was probably like 19 20 21 24 to watch angel beats Ask pro- me. You told me not to watch Angel. Beats. I told you not to, and you did. <laughs> but if I asked someone to do that in our age group right now, and they watched it, we would probably have this conversation because we've experienced the things that we have, and we are closer to that kind of uh, idea of afterlife. And we've experienced death many times now in our lifetime because we've uh, we've been you know we're twenty one. Naturally, we're going to experience those things. So now that type of idea is in our mind a lot. Much more than we were teenagers. Teenagers, mm-hmm. we're, we're focused on the fact that we're just trying to graduate. Yeah. That's the only thing in our minds right now. Trying to, you know, do all the school shit, you know? But now we have we have a lot of experiences and we're only 20. We have way more to experience. But in general, in general, in comparison to when I was 21 and when I was 16, I've experienced a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. So now I can have a conversation like this. Yeah, and I, that's what Angel Beats is, and that's what I want Angel Beats to be for others. Because I feel like a teenager can also have this type of conversation. They just need to, they just need to find it in some in themselves to think about, yeah, that what you said, like the what's next type of thing. I suppose. Yeah. yeah, and the the presenting of of those ideas can be really scary if you're not prepared for it. Right, like the. You know, the way that you and I see the story of this show it can definitely be drastically different from the way that someone else sees this show. And even just anime in general, you know, the the way that they're able to convey these types of stories in such a, a fascinating way, um, you know, like they they sit and talk about death and mm-hmm. and the afterlife and all of these all of these things that you know all of us wonder about. All of us have questions about that, and mm-hmm. and everybody wants to know what happens. And when they present this idea and present it in a way that in in the context of the show it makes sense. Mm-hmm. And they're able to create a world where all of this does make sense. All of this can be applied to the world that they created. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think that they did a really, really good job of of making it so that it om- it didn't seem real. But the way that people re- like the characters in the show reacted to the things happening in the show, it felt human. Right. And so, you know, it, it's such a a fascinating idea. Like the idea of the show is super fascinating, yes. and I I feel like we could we could talk about that all day if we wanted to, <laughs> because there are so many different avenues that we could go down of, you know, talking about mortality, talking about the afterlife, talking about. You know, what would you do if you were in this situation? Like, do you think that you would be able to accept the way that you died, no matter how brutal it was? Mm-hmm. And the the idea that at the end of the show, every like they were just on a mission to make sure 
that everyone was happy with the life they lived. And I think that that's super, super cool. Zach. You know, so towards the end, and this is what really makes me want to play the game so much is because like, I think like one of the last couple episodes, I think maybe like the second to last episode, um, the ending of the episode prior was like, okay, Otsunashi explains the afterlife type thing, the being obliterated type thing. You can choose accept it or not. Episode ends. Next episode in the beginning, everybody's in that hallway. And then, you know, the band members are like, hey, you know, we heard what you said. We accept it. And then they just disappear. The beginning of the episode mm -hmm. just kind of like, you know, but that kind of part of it is like, you know, there's only a couple episodes left. We got to do what we got to do. There is no fucking chance that we're going to be able to go through every character, you know? Yeah. Um, and as I'm watching the last couple episodes during my rewatch, I'm really seeing how they're kind of rushing the end a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not faulting them. They have to. There's no way they can cram as much as they did. And they did their best to cram as much context as they could in the beginning couple episodes, but they're only left with like one, like three episodes left. And like, oh fuck, what are we going to do? You know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's just, that's just how it's going to go. It's a multi, like I said, multi chapter, multi hour, multi day type visual novel. There's just no way you can do that in 13 episodes. So that also makes me want to watch more, but they get the critical characters. They got to be able to do it and they made us cry at the end. So I feel like they did a good job anyways, man, Zach, before they before we end it, I gotta talk, I gotta talk about Yui right here. Oh my gosh, yes. These two right here, Zach. These two. The oh my goodness gracious, Zach. Oh my lord. This is probably the number one saddest moment of Angel Beats. Just just the number one nominated by the anime watcher, by us anime watchers for the saddest moments. The saddest moment in Angel Beats. Yui's story. Because... Oh my god, dude. It was <sighs> It was so hard to not just sit there and feel so bad for her because she was paralyzed from mm -hmm. from the neck down. Like yes. she couldn't do much of anything. Mm -hmm. And so all she did was sit and watch TV and wish that, that she could do all of these things. And so like <sighs> Otanashi was like, it was his mission to make sure that he checked all the boxes and he was, he was able to allow her to experience all of these things. Yeah, and they're super random. You know, like, I yeah. want to do a German suplex. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> but uh, it's it's okay. So that part, when I first watched it, it's kind of silly. It's funny, you know? Classic key visual. Silly, silly, silly sad, you know? <laughs> but the, at my second rewatch, what, I, what it reminds me of is just like, her, she, she literally wanted to do anything. Anything that she watched on TV. She was like, I want to do that. I wish I could do that. And that's why they were so random, you know? I want to be able to cross five people up and score a goal in soccer. That's so stupid. And the way they presented it was so stupid. But when you take a step back and think about it, there is, of course, she's going to wish she wish she would have done that because she was paralyzed. I wish I could do that, but I would never, I was never able to experience it. These silly things like doing a German <laughs> suplex on a random dude. It's so stupid. But even the silliest, stupidest things are the things that she couldn't do because she was paralyzed. Hitting a home run or not. even I think it was like a not even a home run, like out of the park or some shit, you know, mm -hmm. it's so it's it's so dumb and it's silly and it's classic Yui because she's just, you know, the entire show. She's just this random, massive burst of energy, energy character, you know, mm -hmm. always causing trouble, always screaming and shit, always being. Um, oh, what was the name again? Uh, uh, Hinata always being this like this uh crazy this uh, uh uh rival character to Hinata this entire time you know mm -hmm. here we go and then towards the end it's just like you know uh, checking all the lists she's like oh there's one thing I want to do and it's I want to be married oh so now she's like I can't uh married is that's a bit hard to do and she's like would you accept me you know mm -hmm. I'm I paralyzed from the neck down i couldn't do anything without someone else's help would you be able to suit all my needs and that's like ah oh, fuck man you know because there are people like that in this world who question that type of thing i want to experience love i want to experience all these sorts of things but i'm not able to and i feel like yui was that embodiment of you kind of understanding how they would feel and then hinata kind of comes in i'll marry you 
And it, it was kind of like this, ah, uh, they're all this rivalry type shit, but they are, you know, love factor and stuff. And, but, it, it, you know, that, that type of story is not, is not unknown to us because there are people that are paralyzed from the neck down and they, they want to experience all these sorts of things. It kind of almost gives you a closure of like, yeah, maybe they, they, if they, they, uh, they'll, they'll eventually, you know, end up passing away or whatever. They might end up in this kind of in between life where they want to experience all sorts of things while they can. And it's like, that's, that's that, that, that kind of makes you understand where you is coming from, where she wants to do all the silly things from, uh, doing a German suplex to wanting to be married, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think my favorite part was that he was like coming up with a, a feasible way for, for it to actually, happen. Oh my gosh, I know. Right. The and, baseball going through the yeah. window and stuff. Oh my gosh. And I love how they showed it too. And uh -huh. they were just like showing how it could have happened in reality. And it's just like, Oh my God, this is so fucking sad. Uh, and it's just like, you know, you, uh, <laughs> yeah you feel the tears welling up arthur it it's 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 more than tears Zach. it's a it's an ugly waterfall <laughs> the number one nominated saddest part of angel beats bro not the ending not the train not uh not uh masumi Mas uh, masumi the the singer girl no it's yui and the uh, ichiban and takamano uh, ta uh, tak taka taka uh my 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 greatest treasure plays and it's Yui's version so Yui is singing it ah the saddest thing ever and it's and yeah and then he explains this whole storyline of how he would meet her in another world had they been able to meet and be married and then the scenes play out where he you know because he plays baseball Hinata and maybe a ball st hits strikes through the window and he goes to apologize he meets Yui and they talk and you know they have this exchange and uh simple things like that this kind of starting to sound like josie where he goes and becomes Fuck, his yeah. care her caretaker Fuck, and it's just like oh my god and it's just it's such a miracle to happen but it, it, it gives you kind of this closure of like that that makes me happy you know this this is this is, yes finally some finally some good fucking food you know like I, <laughs> you know I'm, it's like it makes you happy to see something like that you know and you do wish that that type of thing happened more often um, especially in the real world but of course it doesn't because it's you know right life is cool and cruel and stuff you know but seeing that in person in, in anime form and seeing that type of type of thing it's kind of like oh thank god you know i the at least for once this one encounter of a, of a girl in the situation like this is able to have this miracle encounter even if it's theoretical and it was enough to make her accept her life as it was and make her move on and who knows, Zach? Because it's afterlife and everything. She moves on. She gets reincarnated into a Who Man, and then Hinata gets reincarnated into a Who Man as well, and they meet in another life. Who knows, Zach? These type of romance story things, these type of things you just think about. And sometimes, you know what? Maybe it's a good thing that we don't know. Maybe it's a good thing that we don't think about this type of afterlife stuff, and we don't find an answer for it. Because if we do find an answer for it, then we can't ha have these type of these type of conversations. We can't have these type of miracle ideas and these what ifs what ifs i think these what ifs help us drive this dream that we have this thought uh, this thought provocation that we have this hope this wishing for hope this wishing for an afterlife these wishing for these two characters to meet in another life these wishing for at the end of the at the end of the credits roll um of, of the end role uh uh kind of meeting otanashi at the in some other in the next life you know mm -hmm. that type of thing where it's so open-ended because we don't know what afterlife is because we don't know what life after death is we don't know if reincarnation exists we don't know if a spiritual plane exists we don't know if af uh heaven or hell exists these because we have these as ideas i'm not challenging any religions i'm just saying i'm speaking bluntly now i'm buddhist and i still and i still recognize that spiritual type of shit is an idea okay it's just you know so what it is and that's fine that's a good thing but because we have those beliefs and they're not factual they're just beliefs and we can believe in it and because we can believe in it we can have these things where yes yui and hinata can meet in another life they can have this theoretical life where uh he crashes the ball through the window and they meet even though she can never leave that hospital room somehow that happens we can have that idea and we can make peace with it we can have Kanade and Otanashi meet in another life because we don't know if that exists. 
I think that's very important for us humans. It's very important for us to not know what's ahead of us so that we, we can just keep keep thinking and hoping for a brighter future, I think. To mm-hmm. keep thinking and hoping for something and grabbing onto something. Because there's nothing... Humans cannot move forward without something to pull themselves forward. Without having a rope to yank themselves forward. Motivation, determination. These type of things is what humans need in order to proceed forward. Otherwise, they can't... Otherwise, we're just at a standstill. We don't know what to do. There's a reason why competition in, in massive companies exists because no company is just going to com- continuously grow even though that's what we want. That's not what happens. Apple, Samsung is not going to grow if Apple doesn't pull their chain and 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 Intel isn't going to grow if AMD doesn't pull their chain. We witnessed this. I don't know if you've been keeping up with uh, Intel Alder Lake stuff, the new generation. Mm-mm. Basically, Intel finally clawed its way back and is now beating AMD again in this new round of 12th generation chips because they changed their architecture completely. And this entire time, Intel, as we've all known, is this powerhouse of like, oh yeah, Intel is just the best, better than AMD mainstream. Um, No matter what AMD does, Intel is just better. And then all of a sudden, AMD comes up, fuck you, Intel, takes the crown from them. And this entire time, Intel has just been sitting on this boat of like, yeah, we're the best, you know, kind of tortoise and hare style, you know? And then AMD goes, get fucked, nerd. And while he was, while Intel was resting, AMD took the throne. And now Intel had to do what they, now that AMD is finally, where, what are you going to, what are you going to do about it, man? You were sitting on your throne high and mighty all this fucking time, bro. What are you going to do about it? And finally, there, that, that determination and motivation and competition was, it was what was able to make Intel better than AMD again this generation. These type of motivation, determination, competition, these type of things is what drives the human soul and, and drives the human fire, sparks the fire in us humans to do better. That's what these, that's, that's, that's why, that's why things like, I'm sorry, I know I'm talking a lot, but you know, that's why these things like, it's okay to not know what this afterlife is. We don't need to know. I feel like there are a lot of people who want to know and that's what religion is for. That's fine. I'm Buddhist. That's okay. Are uh, there's some, are you Christian? Yeah. Technically, yes. That's okay. That's good. Religion is good. And if you don't want to believe in religion, that's okay too. But not knowing is very important for that kind of uh, what I've just been spewing, this kind of broken record I've just been doing for this past fucking hour, this past couple of days, past couple of months of not knowing what's in front of us, but wishing what 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 in front of us could be and acting upon it when it happens, I suppose. But for now, it's like, yeah, it's afterlife is a thing. Death is a fact. Or afterlife could or death is a fact. Afterlife could be a thing. Who knows? Um, what can that be? Is it some miracle? Is it if one person dies, a baby is born? Is that what it is? Or maybe it isn't. Who knows? But because of that interpretation, anybody can think of how they want to think of it. They can believe in afterlife, they cannot believe in afterlife. But that gives them belief. And belief is what's very important for human growth. For to have something to for to have a chain to pull against, a rope to pull themselves up is belief. Thank you for watching this episode of, of <laughs> Arthur's Corner. Arthur's Corner. Uh, yeah, just the the idea that what is after the credits roll in your life. Like, mm. like thinking of oh. <laughs> was applaud just an applaud yeah. just happened, bro. Oh my god, a fresh Prince of Bel Air applaud, just like, woo! Let's go. That was good. That was good. After the end roll, after after the credits roll after in your life, roll. does the story keep going? I think does I it? I. It's it's. To put it that way, I mean, mm. you know, after. No, that's good. That's good. After the story ends, after your story ends, is there more? Is there more? Yes. Is there more things that happen? And you know, I I kind of think about life like if there's an afterlife or not. I'm gonna make the best of being on this floating rock in the middle of space, mm-hmm. and you know, I the the. You know, there there are a lot of people who talk about legacy. Like, you know, what legacy am I going to leave behind? And, you know, I for me, I would want that to be just, you know, 
I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. Be good to people. You know, like I, I think, uh, oh my gosh, what show was it that we were watching? Uh, where one of the characters was like, oh, this was Bunny Girl Senpai, yeah. Uh, where she was like, my goal in life is to be a little bit kinder every single day. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that was um, Makinohara. Yeah. Or I guess Shoko-san. Shoko <laughs> Shoko-san. Shoko 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 Sorry, my bad. Shoko-san. <laughs> Someone cringed. Shoko uh, that was the older version. Yeah. She, she said... But that was... But that was but then that was Sakata telling the younger version, oh, God, it's fucked, Zach. <laughs> it's a circle. <laughs> it's a circle of life. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just becoming a kinder person every single day. And, you know, that's that's the way that I want to live. And that's how I hope that when I have kids, I hope that they think the same way. Mm -hmm. Because it's like... You know, we're all here together in this floating rock in, in the middle of space. So, you know, just be nice to your neighbors. Yeah. Be nice to people. I don't know. I don't know why this became such a wholesome thing, but I'm just rolling with it. Zach, this is an anime in 2010, Zach. Yeah. Got you, got you thinking. Got, got me say, thinking. I watched yeah. Angel Beats and it changed my life. You're like, you're a fucking weeb. Shut the fuck up. Go do my homework. Fuck you, dude. That didn't happen, of course, but you know. <laughs> but you know. You know. Just yep. take just just <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Listen, all right. Watch anime, watch shows, watch movies, and take what they are. You know, it doesn't have to be the high highest octane demon slayer final fight type shit. It can be a slow paced shogi anime. It can be a 2010 anime about afterlife. Who the fuck knows, bro? Who the fuck? Just you know. Take whatever it is in life and do it as you will. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to pee so fucking bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I was going to pee before we did the shoot, but I was like, all right, we're going to be wasting too much time, bro. So now we're, we're <laughs> now I'm gonna now I'm going to pee now. So links in the Please description. Please don't do it right now. I'm okay. Well, not right now. But, you know, <laughs> into this can. <laughs> Check that out. Patreon if it's there. Probably not. Um, <clears throat> you know, coffee, our links in the socials. Do you have anything else to say, Zach? Uh... Be good people. I love your face. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.